Railcraft. Have you ever wished minecarts and rails had received a bit more attention during development? Well, that ends now. Gone are all those broken bits, and in their place are a ton of new tools to build your massive rail system. If you ever cared about rails, you won't ever look back. You are not required to sign up to view the wiki, only to... Oh, sorry, I, I, I copy-pasted it from the wiki, and it... Uh, anyways, Railcraft bit of an interesting mod, and here's why. Most mods use the very basic one machine equals one block. That block is really complicated to craft, but when you're done, you have yourself a machine. <coughs> Greg Tech. Railcraft does away with that for the most part, because Railcraft has multi-block structures. This is why it's also not so much of a noob-friendly mod. I mean, any I might tell you how to craft it, but it sure doesn't tell you how to make the structure. And that's why I'm here. I want to cover Railcraft in about 20 minutes or less, and a feat, it's a feat not accomplishable unless I'm really quick, so let's hop to it. First thing you're going to need to make is a coke oven. As you might know, a coke oven takes a really long time to make the creso oil you're going to need, so it's important to get that up and running as soon as possible. A coke oven is simple, sand and bricks. Uh, while you're out, grab a few red flowers as well. You're also going to need some coal to extract the oil from. This is your first multi-block structure, and it's set up as so. Note the empty square in the center. When you finish your multi-block structure, it's going to show up with this little side, little thing on the side, and that's how you know you've completed the structure. Uh, for reference, a multi-block structure would be, um, if I took a chest and then I put another chest to it, and now it's a double chest, that is essentially a multi-block structure, and it all acts as one machine. As you can see, I put a bunch of coal in here um, when I first started building and it finished, uh, which shows you how long it took me to build everything, um, and it gave me creosote oil and coal coke. You can get the creosote oil with buckets or with pipes or whatever you want, and coal coke is essentially coal that works a little bit better than normal coal. It, it burns for longer. The next thing you're going to need is a shit ton of iron. This is a mod about minecarts and rails, of course, so iron is going to be needed for almost every step of the process. But if you're, uh, if you're looking for high-speed rails, you're also going to want to grab some gold. Um, actually, you're going to need diamonds, too. You know what? Fuck it. Just, just grab everything. Uh, now that you have everything, let's learn how to make the basic rail. This is important if you want some of the perks of railcraft, but you don't want the rest of the rails, so if you memorize anything, memorize what I'm showing you right now. You're going to need one more machine, and this machine's actually really easy to make, and it's called the rolling machine. And it's how you're going to roll the iron, not how you spell roll, it's how you're going to roll the iron into rails. It's just pistons, iron, uh, crafting table, and you only need to make one of them. So it's one of the few blocks that isn't a multi-block structure. Unfortunately, this one requires some sort of power, so whatever mod you have installed, use that power source and hook it up. You'll notice that even though this rail, uh, rolling machine from Railcraft requires uh, Minecraft jewels, I've got a thermal expansion creative energy cell hooked up, and it's pu outputting RF. And yes, it does work. You'll notice that it's also fluctuating, and that's not a glitch because I'm using RF, but because... The rolling machine slowly uses power just to sit here and exist, so keep that in mind. Um, to make your standard rails, you just put six iron in here, you click to craft, it'll craft it, you'll get some rails. Now all we need is the bed. You're going to take some glass bottles, put them in here, or you could even use buckets. You're going to take that creosote oil and you're going to put it over a line of three wooden slabs like this. That'll turn it into wooden ties. We're going to need a couple of those, so I'm just going to grab all of them. You take your wooden ties, put them in a 2x2 two two crafting formation, it's going to make you your wooden rail beds. Then we'll take those standard rails we crafted earlier, put our wooden rail beds down, make essentially a rail shape, and ta-da! You've got your tracks! Alright, we're done here. No? Alright, well let's get into some more interesting things, but the recipes end here. Go download NEI, it's not like you'd remember all the recipes if I showed them to you right now. The biggest question with Railcraft is, what is it that you really want to do? Cause there are all these really cool items, machines, tracks, and tools, and so on, but if you don't have an ultimate goal in mind, then none of that is gonna be really useful for you. I'm not going to give you ideas because that's your department, but maybe you'll get some ideas as I show you what there is to use overall. First, the tracks. You're gonna need these to go places. Do you still have those red flowers? Time to make a crowbar. Now that you have it, keep it with you when you're working with the rails. You're going to need it when you're accessing some of the GUIs that the rails have, as well as uh, picking things up and linking carts together. Yep, these rails have GUIs, and yep, sometimes I say GUI. It's a fun word. There are a few different categories of rails, and each category of rail has the same 
type of rails. Uh, they're your basic rails, or tracks, the kinds that we've already made. They're your wooden tracks, which are inherently slower but cheaper because they use less iron. Uh, reinforced rails, which are mm, nigh indestructible and fast. And then there are your high speed rails, which are so fast that if you collide with a pig or try to turn, you'll become dust. Now, if you're like I was when I first heard this mod, you'll want to make some super fast rails. I warn you now, this shit is dangerous. Alright, good. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. The first thing you need are some high speed transition tracks and or booster tracks. Booster tracks will boost you when powered and slow you down when they're not powered. Transition tracks will boost you in one direction when powered and slow, slow you in the other direction if powered. And if it's not powered, you'll just stop dead. If you use about 8 tracks, you'll be traveling past 88 like the crazy mofo you are. But, what if you need to turn? And just because I know you guys want to see it, let's see what happens if there was something on the track. Sorry, pig. Hey, I survived that one! Oh, so you're going to need to slow down to normal speeds for that turning thing. Straight lines are really all that is viable for high-speed rails. Like I said before, make sure there is nothing on the rails or you'll die as well. Is there any way to prevent such a violent and awesome death, Jump Splat? Yes, and it's called the locomotive. There is something majestic about a steam locomotive. Something that to this day fascinates people worldwide. The crowding achievement of the, of the Industrial Revolution. They were as nearly complex as any mechanical clock, yet their size and presence just ooze power. Steam locomotives have a few defining features. Oh, sorry. Uh, copying from the wiki again. Uh, but steam locomotives are useful because they can essentially clean the tracks. And by clean the tracks, I mean if you run into a pig, uh, the pig dies and not you. Uh, kinda painful lesson for the pig, but such is progress. Steam locomotives are, like the powered minecart, powered. These suckers run off, you guessed it, steam, and without it, it's just not going to do anything. Steam is created with solid fuel and water, but there's easier ways than just taking a bucket of water and taking a steel pickaxe and grabbing some coal and filling it up manually every single time, which you can do if you want to. Look at that, slowly heating up. Yeah, you can you could do it manually if you want to, but why do it manually when you can do it automatically using some item loaders from Railcraft and some liquid loaders from Railcraft and just having your cart come in and having it fill up and having it send right back out again. Also, you can color your steam locomotives. Mine's pink and blue, which is pretty swish if I do say so myself. Look at that. Filling it up with coal, filling it up with water. Is there anything about... Oh, yeah. Whistles. Wow. Sorry, I, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. We were, we were really all over the rails. Okay, but I guess it's time to get back on track with this tutorial and kick it into high speed. Anyways, uh, chunk loading. Uh, keeps chunks loaded with anchors in multiple varieties. A world anchor keeps the chunk loaded. Always. A personal anchor keeps the chunk loaded if the owner is logged in. And this is an admin loan. Uh, anchor, which is essentially a free anchor for admins. You can only cheat these in. Uh, anchors, both personal and world variety, both need ender pearls. And one ender pearl is about 12 real time hours. You can also use anchor sentinels with world and personal anchors to define a long strip of chunks to be defined as well. You place an anchor, you place a sentinel. Way over there. Then, if you right click on the sentinel and then you right click on your anchor it will say it was successfully paired and now all the chunks in that line will be loaded how can you tell they're loaded well you can make some trackman's goggles switch them to anchor mode and put them on you get this nifty little particle effect telling you which chunks are loaded and last but not least anchor carts which essentially do the same thing uh, but in cart form you can hook these suckers up to your uh, train or locomotive and 
it'll just keep the train loaded at all times. Oh, but wait! How can you hook these up? It's actually really easy. Just get two carts right next to each other and shift click. Boop, link created. Link created. Now, when we move them, they all move! I don't know if you could see that, but they, they were all moving. Just, just believe me. It happened. Next, steam power. Yep, we're getting steampunk in here. Everything is steam powered in Railcraft. First thing you're going to want to make is the very easiest, hobbyist steam engine. Ever played with thermal expansion and used the steam dynamo? Yeah, it's basically your uh, first power generation, and it'll accept water and solid fuels uh, to make your own steam in one easy package. It'll output 1.6 me uh, Minecraft jewels a tick while making it its own steam, or 2 Minecraft jewels a tick when it's being supplied with steam. After that, you have to make a commercial steam engine, which will produce up to 4 Minecraft jewels a tick, but it won't make steam on its own. You'll have to supply it with steam. And last but not least is the industrial steam engine, which outputs a whopping 8 Minecraft jewels a tick. That's 160 Minecraft jewels a second if your computer doesn't suck. Um, something to note is the consumption rate of these engines. They consume 10, 20, and 40 uh, millibuckets of steam respectively, so keep that in mind when hooking them up with pipes. Hooking them up to what, you might ask? Well, that'd be the boiler, of course. The steam boiler produces steam for you in a multitude of ways. There are two variations of fuel consumption, and two variations of pressure, and many sizes. You have your solid fuel firebox, which takes common solid fuels, coal, charcoal, uh, charcoal, coal, coke, and weirdly enough, lava. And then you have your liquid fuel, which takes creosote, uh, creosote oil, biofuel, I'm not really sure whether it means industrial craft or mine factory reloaded or some other biofuel, but those were the two that are in the monster pack, so I'm assuming those will work. And of course, uh, fuel from Buildcraft. After that, you have to pick your boiler type, high or low pressure. Low pressure is more efficient, and high pressure will, will produce more steam. <gasps> Each cubic meter of low pressure boiler tank produces 10, 10 millibuckets of steam with tick, which is enough to run a single hobbyist en uh, steam engine at full capacity or a commercial steam engine at half capacity, basically two Minecraft tools of tick. Each cubic meter of high pressure boiler tank produces 20 steam a tick, sufficient to run a commercial steam engine at full capacity or an industrial steam engine at half capacity. Basically, four Minecraft tools a tick. The larger the steam boiler, the more efficient it is in terms of fuel usage. You will generally be better off building a single large boiler instead of several small ones. The size of the tank you can build depends on the size of the firebox. A 1x1 one one firebox can only handle a single cubic meter tank. The 2x2 two two can handle 8 or 12 cubic meters of boiler tank. And finally, the massive 3x3 three three can handle 18, 27, or 36 cubic meters of boiler tank. For reference, they also say the available sizes when you mouse over them. Here's an example of building a boiler. You'll notice that when the boiler is finished, it'll stop having the gaps between the high pressure boiler tank bits itself, and you'll be able to right click on it and get a GUI. You look at this GUI and you might go, hey, we've seen this before. Exactly, that's the same GUI that's in the steam engine, or steam locomotive, and same one that's in the steam engine. Once you've built your steam boiler, you are going to need to provide it with water and fuel. A word of warning, you must supply a constant stream of steady water to the firebox, not the tanks, um, or else your boiler, boom. Introducing water to a hot and dry boiler is even more dangerous. That being said, boilers are pretty safe so long as the water supply is constant. Uh, when first heating up a boiler, they're going to be very inefficient and they're going to use up to 8 times more fuel than when they're running at max heat. So it's generally recommended that you leave your boiler running all the time rather than turning it on and shutting it down. Um, especially since the large boilers, whoops, didn't mean to do that, especially since the large boilers take, um, heat, take longer to heat up. The bigger the boiler is, the longer it's going to take to heat up. When hooking up machines that use steam, uh, the two choices are to use pipe or to attach them directly to the boiler. Gold pipes are recommended because they put out 40 millibuckets a tick, which is half of what a um, single cubic meter of high pressure will put out, and um, wooden pipes aren't even needed. Also, here's a little math for you. One mil uh, Minecraft tool is going to be 5 steam, and one millibucket of water is 160 millibuckets of steam. Now, I'm going to have to go a little bit off script here because I forgot to mention it. Um, a refined firestone is actually probably one of the most efficient ways to heat up uh, a railcraft tank, and it actually comes from railcraft, except it's very, very expensive. You need raw firestone, 
which you can only find from Firestone or in taking a Rock Crusher. Another reason I didn't want to mention it because a Rock Crusher comes later. And then you you have to cut it with <clears throat> four diamond pickaxes. And yes, the diamond pickaxes do get used up. Then you have to take the cut Firestone and you have to surround it with four redstone blocks and four lava buckets. And then, you need to bring it into the nether. Once you're in the nether, you're gonna have to do one of the most unspeakable things in the world. You know that really expensive refined firestone you took that you just had to cut with 12 diamonds and lava and redstone? Yeah, just chuck it in the lava. Don't worry though, it's not gone. It's actually going to rise up out of the lava, absorb the power of the lava, change the lava into obsidian, and you'll see... It, it's just it's just gonna run for a while. So you can absorb all the power. You'll see these nifty little particle effects. It actually gets very cool the bigger it gets. But uh, you can stop the process at any time just by breaking it, and it'll pick it right up, and you'll get your charges. And it'll now say filled with energy. You only need to exert your will on it to release this blistering heat. Uh, it does have a couple of functions, and the main function is to heat up. Um, Railcraft boilers because it actually uh, will heat it up very very hot very very quickly and you won't have to use all of your precious earned coal or charcoal. The reason I did it is because I kind of wanted to show you what happens if you add water to a hot engine. So I'm going to get this sucker hot and we're going to come back later or it might just explode. Um, while I'm doing this. We'll see what happens. Um, the next thing that you can make now that you have all this steam is, um, other than using it for power generation, of course, is cook things. Um, using the steam oven, which is a 2x2 two two structure and it looks like this, you can cook stuff up to 9 times faster since you can cook things, uh, you can cook up to 9 things at a time. Say, combine this steam oven with a tree farm and then use that uh, steam to make charcoal and then use that charcoal to make steam and then you've got yourself a nifty little power generating system and yes it is actually a positive system so you will get more power if you do it um, if you're doing that unless your tree farm is like really inefficient sorry anyways uh, what else can you do with it well you could always make a steam trap and shoot it to melt the faces off of your enemies um, there are two different types there's the automated and manual the manual needs a redstone signal to go off and the Automated detects players and mobs. It's also going to take 32 uh, buckets, not mellow buckets, but buckets of steam every time it's activated. So keep that in mind because it's going to use a lot of steam. Say you want electrical power instead of Minecraft rules. Well, using the steam engine, you can generate 200 EU a tick or 4,000 EU a second. The steam tu turbine uses a lot of steel, however, and the turbines do need to re be replaced occasionally. And by occasionally, I do mean Occasionally. Running at full tilt, these things will work for 84 hours in real time. That's right, days. That means you can chunk load this sucker and leave it on a server to fill up an F MFSU or something crazy like that. There's one other thing I wanted to show you, and uh, the graphic on the front of this is actually animated. Watch this. Look at that. Oh, it's going up. Oh my gosh. It's just really cool. I wanted to show it that to you. And then, uh, look at that, energy pumping into here, full tilt. Um, it is going to take 99 steel ingots to make one turbine rotor, but it's okay because by the time that this sucker runs out, you'll probably have enough steel to remake it. But look, it's going to take turbine blades, which take three uh, iron, and then it's going to take a block of steel, and then you're going to need three of those. So yeah, just keep it in mind, it is going to take a lot of steel. And you guys might be asking, hello Anchor Sentinel, how do you make steel? Because I've mentioned it a couple of times and my uh, crowbar, not this crowbar, but the other crowbar I had before I exploded was made out of steel. Well, that would be a blast furnace. You might be asking yourself, how can I make one of these nifty little blast furnaces? Well, it's going to take some nether materials, uh, so you're going to have to go to the nether first. But it's actually pretty simple. Three there, you're going to leave the center hollow and then you're going to cap it off. And when it's done, it's gonna have this little graphic down at the bottom. Multi-block structure, so you right click it, and hey, that looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? Well, the thing about a blast furnace is it's really picky, so it's only gonna be able to take um, two types of fuel, either coal coke or charcoal. Dum, 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 dum. It's actually going to take four pieces of charcoal or one piece of coal coke to make one steel ingot. So yeah, steel's gonna take a while to make. It's a little bit later game. 
I believe that you can take uh, the iron, combine it into a uh, iron block, and then cook them directly into steel blocks. But that may have been changed, and it didn't mention it on the wiki, so I didn't want to throw that in here. But keep that in mind, it might work. Uh, next, we have the Rock Crusher. That's that thing I mentioned over there. And the Rock Crusher is a 2x3 structure, just like this. When you finish, it'll have this very foreboding black square on the top, and when you right-click it, it's going to have this graphic. On the inside, it can crush up to nine things at a time, and it is going to take power, but it's not going to use that power just to exist like the um, rolling machine does. Again, it can take other forms of power, or at least RF. And uh, the Rock Crusher is useful for a couple of things, mainly being what I'm standing on right now, and you guys might have been wondering, what the fuck is he standing on? This is Crushed Obsidian, and Crushed Obsidian is, as you can guess it, Crushing Obsidian in a Rock Crusher. The only way to obtain it, and the only way to obtain um, Crushed Obsidian Dust, unless you have a different mod installed, and that Obsidian Dust can be used for advanced rails, not reinforced, but actual advanced rails, and those are used in certain rail crafting recipes. The last but not least multi-block structure that I'm going to show you today is the dynamic tank. They're essentially massive tanks you can build to hold all those new liquids you've got, and they are in fact will hold any liquid that is forged res registered. The bigger you make the tank, the more it'll hold. The valves are what uh, pumps in and out of, so you can have as many valves as you want. Uh, generally you only need two, one to go in, one to go out. Um, the wall is wall, and the glass is glass. The, uh, it's called gauge, but yeah, glass. You can technically, if you want, fill it in like this. You don't have to have the gauge there, but generally this is the shape. Um, you can also have it like this if you want it, and have it all glass. Um, but, you know, to each his own. When you finish, if you have Walia, it'll show you that you've got um, something to store liquids in. And if you right click on it, it'll say how much space you have, and then it'll give you a slot over here for... Um, pulling this stuff out in buckets. I'm just gonna pump some of my meat in here, and you'll see it'll slowly start to fill up. And if we put our mouse over, you can see it slowly filling up. And this uh, does count in millibuckets, so that's 27, 28, 29 buckets, not 30,000 buckets. So yeah, I mean, I haven't gone over, of course, all the decorative blocks that there are. Uh, but, I mean, they're decorative blocks, so if you really want to figure those out, just go into NEI, look up the recipes. They're just decorative. They don't really do much. Um, they will be kind of helpful if you're doing signaling and such, but we didn't go over signaling in this video, and so I haven't said anything. I haven't gone over the most of the tracks or any signaling or automation because that's a whole different ballpark. This was kind of Railcraft 101, and 102 may or may not be coming depending on how smart I am. Uh, the signaling is very similar to actual train signaling, or so I've been told, and so it'll take a while for me to compress it down into easy to digest jump splat based sandwiches. Mmm, sandwiches. Oh, I do hope that everything was easy to understand, and that at the very least, you know how to make some basic rails. I know this mod has been added to a lot of popular mod packs, and people might be wondering, how do I craft my normal generic rails? And I hope this has made it easier for you, and also interested you enough to go beyond just crafting the rails and seeing what else Railcraft has to offer. If you have any questions, or if you have any comments, um, leave them down in the comments. Uh, if I missed anything or made a mistake on anything, uh, be sure to tell me, uh, because you guys do love to do that. This sucker is running at 885 degrees Celsius. Oh, it's actually cooling down. Look at that. And so I'm going to show you for my last hurrah what happens if you add dry water to a boiler. Boom. Well, that wasn't very uh, exciting. Thank <laughs> you.